<laughs> okay. <laughs> Way to go. They caught me right on cue uh, with a with a smart, a funny remark from Laura. So, <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. We are on lesson nine: the shield of faith, protection, and benefits. And so, on our outline, as we've already saw from Peter's first. Lesson, we are concluding our building aspect of the pillars of our house. We've had thinking, believing, confessing, and acting. And now the, the roof is a shield of faith. And here you have these arrows or these darts coming. They're not on the board because I don't want to mess up the board and make it unreadable. But way back in the beginning of this outline, you can see what these fiery darts represent, sin, pain, sickness, poverty, backbiting. They're also the wiles of the devil. There's hatred, bitterness, strife, envy, and gossip. And so the benefits and the protection would, as we walk in faith, they would make us men and women of faith through all of these tests and trials that we would face in life. That's the key. You know, when somebody is backbiting and gossiping against you, you know, we're going to respond in faith and kindness, however God would have us do. We're not going to do it to them. Because this is an act of the devil, to try to get man off being children mm -hmm. of faith, or the faith that works through love. If we can't love one another, he's defeated us. Mm -hmm. He has mm -hmm. defeated us. And so as we love one another, and we've come through that door of love, love never fails. And this is the, the work uh, the, of faith that constrains us. Or why I do things is because of for love's sake. And as I love God and I love others, I'm, I'm learning of God. I'm studying his word. I'm taking in his word. I'm deciding what to believe. I want to believe the things of God. I'm holding it in my heart. I confess it. I act on it. And as I become a man, men and women of faith, when those darts from the enemy come, which we will see later, are the trials of our faith, we won't succumb to that. I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to respond to an attack of the devil because God has called us to be men and women of faith that works through love. <laughs> and love will never gossip or backbite. So on this, so we understand we have the shield of faith that these arrows can come and hit the roof, but they're really not going to affect my character and that's what we saw on that last drawing on the last page that these they there's habits in our character one of love and holiness and they may come against the house as Matthew 7 they may beat against the house but the house is going to stand victorious at the end of the day Amen. And so we have the first part here and I'm not going to go uh, let's let's recap Hebrews eleven one first. Hebrews eleven one. Hebrews eleven one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the substance, or that title deed. It's our, it's our purchase and power of all things. Without faith, we can't go to the store and buy anything. <laughs> and and we've, we've seen throughout our lessons so far that, that we are children and sons of God that are entitled to an inheritance because that's the new covenant. It's the new testament. Is, is a testament. An old, the old testament was an old covenant. A covenant can be changed when two parties are still alive. But Jesus was the New Testament. He's died. And now he's the testifier of the New Testament. And as sons and daughters, we have a rightful claim. 
to our inheritance. Amen? Amen. And the purchasing power for that is inheritance is we're born again, we're baptized with the Holy Spirit, and we have faith. And so we bring that that, that inheritance, our, our birthright, <laughs> to Jesus, and we say, I am your child, I'm born again. I'm coming to you in faith. And so that is what faith does. And then as we come to him in faith and we put a claim on our inheritance and we, you know, we have our, our entitlement papers as our, as our birthright, that it's not a natural birth, we're born again. Hallelujah. And Lord, this is my inheritance because he's died <laughs> and he wants to give his children that inheritance. And so faith is the purchasing power of all things. And, and when we come to him with that, that is my claim. Because I am your son. I am your child. So praise the Lord. And praise that Lord. has to take faith. To take, and like I said, there's many, th many blessings of God. There's, throughout the Bible, we have seen, we have seen many blessings. There's, healings, there's forgiveness of sin, many different, but there's provision, there's peace, there's joy. Amen. So all of these things are our rightful inheritance that we come to faith in God and he gives us. That's our purchase and power. Then in point A, we see immediate results of salvation by faith. And this will be studied in great detail when we get to the work of the cross, and that should be maybe before Christmas, but I'm not sure if we're going to get there yet. At some point, we will get to the work of the cross. So I'm not going to go into great detail about each one of these, because you will study these. But these are the immediate results of salvation for each one of us that, that we have purchased by faith. <laughs> And the first one is Christ dwells in you. And we saw that, well, we would see that in Ephesians 3.17, that because sin has been removed from the conscience, man is now clean. Now Christ is going to come dwell in us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a justification that, that, yes, we were guilty. And in the court of law, I was guilty of my sin. But now because of Christ and his offer of forgiveness, we are justified from the verdict <laughs> that we all should have faced. And, and so I, I know my friend Pete calls it the royal pardon <laughs> because we've been pardoned and we've come to the Lord and, and we said, yes, I'm guilty of my selfish sin, but Lord, forgive me. I love you, and I will love you with my whole heart, my mind, and my strength, and my soul. And so when, when we've convinced God, we've convinced the Lord that we are truly sorry and repentant of our sin, then, then there's God comes to the mind. You see, we reach out towards heaven in faith, and God comes to the, to the mind with the blood of his precious son, and he cleanses us of all sin. Hallelujah. And he releases us from that pardon of death that my sin deserved. And so it's a, we're, we're justified from that crime. We're absolved from punishment and guilt. That's justification. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a great God we serve. Amen. <laughs> What a great yeah. God we serve. There's eternal life. And you have on here John 3, 16, which is true. But to me, I like John 17, 3. This is eternal life, that we may know the Father. That is a relationship with him, and that we may know his Son. And so eternal life is that relationship with, with the Father and with, the, with his Son, Jesus Christ. This is eternal life, is a relationship. Mm -hmm. There's also the baptism into Christ. And when we are born again, we're baptized into the body of Christ. 
And we'll learn of the four baptisms of Christ, or four baptisms that we face. We had that sonship, and of course that was, like I said, by adoption. We have our, our purchase in power, papers or are born again. I'm born again. Now where's my inheritance? Because then he would recognize, yes, you are my son. You are my daughter. This is your inheritance. You've come to me in faith. Here it is. This is yours. Receive it. Then we have the Holy Spirit in Galatians 3, 2 and Titus 3, 5. And this is twofold. When we're born again, the Holy Spirit comes and he regenerates us. He, he cleanses us of our sin by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're washed and renewed by that. And by that, our fruit grows. And so we have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But also there comes a time <laughs> when we want to press into God and be baptized with the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so we also have, would see that the media result of salvation is authority. That Christ has given us authority to tread on the enemies of Christ. He's given us that authority to have victory over sin. To walk in obedience to him. To storm the gates of hell. <laughs> it's always amazing to me sometimes when I visit different nations, and, and especially the, the nation of Nigeria which I've been there a lot of times, more than any other country. And, and there are always billboards and signs about deliverance, deliverance. And man has spent their whole life trying to run from the devil. <laughs> That's the reality. Run from the devil. The reality is Jesus wants us to storm the gates of hell, right. take the fight to him. Offensive. Why are we running in defense when we should be mm -hmm. turning around and charging the gates of hell? The devil mm -hmm. doesn't, I'm not afraid of the devil. David ran towards Goliath. Yes, yes he yes. did, didn't That's he? Right. He sure did. Mm -hmm. But yeah, here, men are trying to, you know, they see the devil, ah, and they run. Mm -hmm. Stop running. You know, because it's a benefit we have. We have the authority over this to tread on serpents. Mm -hmm. We have our inheritance, which I've already mentioned in Acts 20, verse 32. This is your inheritance. This is Jesus died for you that you may receive your inheritance. And he wrote a will. This is yours. There's righteousness of course, before Christ, because of sin in our life, all of our, all of our, all of our works were filthy rags. There was no righteousness in us. But now that Christ has redeemed us, and now we work for a different boss, <laughs> the King of Kings mm -hmm. and Lord of Lords, and we and we step out and do the f works in faith, like. Pete said, with our act and pillar, these are works of righteousness. And of course, the works of righteousness determine our sanctification, our, whether we're holy or not. Our character is judged by our works, and we're sanctified, we're set apart. We're not normal people. We shouldn't be. We should be holy, a peculiar people. That was in John 17, 19. Then in Acts 5, 31, we see that we are a forgiven people. We've received forgiveness. And since we've received such great forgiveness, that we should forgive one another. And I've already spoken that there's two types of forgiveness. You know, we release it. We can't be bitter. We can't seek revenge. We must do what love demands. And then there's that time when there's repentance between two parties. And then there's that forgiveness where relationships can be restored. There's redemption. We've been redeemed. We've been purchased by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there's the regeneration. And so there's that washing of regeneration of our whole being. And so we're being regenerated into a new person. We're not being conformed to this world, but the regeneration is allowing us now to walk as men and women of faith through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
So these are some of the things that have been received and or the results of the of our immediate salvation. And like I said, these will be studied in great detail when we do the work of the cross, which is a two-week course. So let's go on now, and we're going to look here the rest of this evening at protection and benefits beyond the initial salvation by faith. And I just want you to, to draw your attention to the what it says below that, it's produced by daily active faith. This is the result of how we get our protection and our benefits. It, it is produced by daily active faith. So it's not a one-time snap your fingers. We got all the faith we'll ever need in this world. There's the process, and we have to put that into practice every day of our life. Mm -hmm. We cannot ever forget that, that is that we want to produce faith in our actions and we want to be men and women of faith. So how would we do that? Just think, how would we how would we do that in our daily active life? How would we produce that daily active faith? Any thoughts? Pray, make word. Pray, yes. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We saw earlier in, in the word series that our faith is increased by prayer and pray. We build up ourselves in the Holy Ghost by praying in the Holy Ghost. We pray with to the Lord. We have fasting. When we fast, we are relying totally on God to sustain us. And as we totally trust in him and rely on him, that trust, our faith is increasing. I'm not saying we do the fasting every day, but we should be praying every day. And we surely should be reading the Word of God every day to prepare us to produce yeah. daily active faith. We should be that witness to uh, other people around us every yeah. day that uh, yes. are following Christ. Yes, very good, Mark. Mm -hmm. So it's active and progressive. Let's look at Habakkuk 2.4. In the Old Testament, Habakkuk, I think that's how you say it. I remember once I was teaching in Nigeria, and I would say, let's turn to the book of Joel, and nobody would turn to the book of Joel. I said, turn to the book of Joel. What's the book of Joel? And then I lifted it up, and oh, you mean Joel. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope I'm saying Habakkuk right. Habakkuk. 2.4 Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. And so we, we our life is justified by faith. We have that royal pardon by faith. Um, Romans 1.7 is our confirmation of that. One seventeen. I'm sorry. One seventeen. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, and as as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And so, from faith to faith, it's a progress. From faith to faith. From faith to faith. And that faith to faith to me is a twenty four hour process. I can't control it when I'm asleep, <laughs> but I can when I'm awake. And so we begin the day with the word. We begin with prayer. We're, we're ready now to, to produce believing acts of faith in each day. Um, daily purifies our heart. So let's look at Acts 15, 9. So faith daily purifies our heart. Let me jump in here if you want. 15, 9. Yes. And put no difference between us and them, 
purifying their hearts by faith. So our hearts are purified by faith. Or, you may add this sentence, or it daily keeps it pure. So either, you know, it, it will purify our hearts by faith, or it will keep our hearts pure by faith. Because my heart is pure until I sin again, if I choose to. This, we don't sin and have to sin every day. We don't sin every day in thought, word, and deed. And so if my heart is purified, mm -hmm. then that act of faith keeps my heart purified. Mm -hmm. It keeps it pure. It, it daily sanctifies us. Um, Acts 26, 18 To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins mm. and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith, which that is in me. So there's that daily sanctification. And again, as uh, Peter taught us, sanctification means to be set apart. But what qualifies us to be set apart from the rest of the world? Is that we've repented. We've turned from the dark, the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And we've asked the Lord to forgive us of our sin. And we've repented of our sin. And he's granted us that forgiveness. And he set us apart. We've believed and we've acted. Sin is removed. And I'm set apart now because my character is holy. And of course, as we are set apart, we begin to walk each day in faith. Mm -hmm. We have victory over the day, and we can begin to do great works for God. So there's that daily sanctification. We're set apart for good works. Then also, again, there's daily justification. <clears throat> Romans 3.28 <clears throat> For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. But as Peter said, <laughs> you show me your faith, I'll show you works. And so there's faith and works together. But we're justified by faith. We've received our pardon by faith. Because we've come to him. Of course, it's not by faith alone. Mm -hmm. There has to be repentance first. Mm -hmm. There has to be a change of motive. Prior to I came to the cross, I was selfish, and the heart was selfish. So there has to be a alignment of how selfish I was, and my motive has to change from selfishness <laughs> to love. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be selfish anymore. I want to receive that love of God, and I want to love you. And then we repent of our sin. Mm -hmm. And as we repent of our sin, and we've convinced God, that we truly are repentant, then God grants us that forgiveness of mind and he's released us Hallelujah. from our sin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And that blood of Jesus, it, it was something supernatural that could only release us from sin. And that was the death of Jesus. That blood of the lamb mm -hmm. that's been applied to your conscience. Mm -hmm. And so that conscience would testify, our spirit would testify that we are sons of God because we've been released Amen. from sin. That is justification, the removal of the penalty of a crime that has been committed. Since we are justified, then we should have daily righteousness, Romans 4, 5. Romans 4, 5. But to him that worketh not, but believe on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. So here is that daily righteousness of, that faith would produce. Righteousness is an act of obedience. We have moral light presented to our mind, the truth, 
And we've seen many times throughout the study so far that we have a responsibility to obey the truth. That is righteousness. Simple act of obedience is a work of righteousness. Because I, I've been released from my my condemnation. Amen. I've been released and justified through faith in what Christ has done at the cross. And now, as I walk in obedience, that's a work of righteousness. And so, someone that ever says to you, well, we're not saved by works. You're, you are saved by obedience. Of course, this is Calvinism. They believe that God, Jesus does everything and you have no part in it. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you do, Jesus does it for you. And if you haven't been released from it, then Jesus hasn't done it. Mm -hmm. But here, as Pete taught us, I'll show you faith. I'll show you works of righteousness. And that is because Christ has set me free. Now I'm going to walk in obedience to him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to obey mm -hmm. him. Of course, we can take them works of righteousness and we go a little farther. Okay, go do this. <laughs> he may call us to do an action, a CT stud. He may call you to whatever, to pray. He may call you to do this Bible study. This is an act of righteousness. You've obeyed God. You've been led here. The Spirit has brought you here. You could have stayed home. You could have said no. Could you not have? But you chose to come here by the leading of the Holy Spirit. This is a work of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And God is going to bless and honor that. Amen. Amen. Let's look at one more here. Philippians 3, 9, under point 5. And be found in him, yes. not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. By faith. So that is what we do as we've looked at our whole house here. We've had the word. We thought about the word. We believed the word. We've confessed the word. Now we're going to obey the word. And this is our action. And of righteousness. Let's look at daily grace. Romans 5, 2. Through whom we have also obtained our introduction by faith into the grace in which we stand and result in hope of the glory of God. And so here's that daily grace by which we do what? We stand. stand. And again, this word in the Greek is stand as, as one that has gone through a battle, but he's victorious. He hasn't been cut down by the enemy. He stood. He's standing as the conquering hero of the battle. Mm -hmm. And it is through grace. But, you know, we, we don't understand sometimes what grace or how grace works in this moment of our daily life. And so we find that answer in Titus 2, 11 and 12. And I'll just read it, if you don't mind. Therefore, or, or this is the grace of God that has appeared to all men that bring salvation, <laughs> teaching them to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. So in our daily lives, this is that daily grace we receive by faith. Mm -hmm. And faith reaches up towards heaven and God's grace comes down. And here is that grace of God that will bring salvation to us, teaching us. It's teaching the heart to deny, push back against ungodliness and worldly lust. In other words, I'm not going to do it. No. See, this is faith that, that wants God's help to stand victorious. We want to be victorious. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cry out to God when that temptation comes. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm reaching up to you in faith, and there's that grace, and it's teaching me. It's that divine influence of the heart that says, no, I will not live 
but I will, I will not live in sin, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, so that what? We may live soberly and righteously in this present age. That's beautiful. Mm, wonderful. Mm. Don't ever forget that when you're facing a temptation or a strong whatever. You know, we all are all are tempted. Stop. <laughs> Daily. Lord, where's your grace? I believe that we can do this. I'm reaching up to you. And here comes that divine influence. And next thing you know, we're standing as the victors. Because mm-hmm. Christ, Paul said in Romans 8, we are more than conquerors. Because <laughs> yeah. we stand victorious. And you know something? For every battle that have ever been fought, to the victor go the spoils. Mm-hmm. So the spoils of war belong to us. That's why we're told to storm the gates of hell. That's why we're told to stand as victorious through God's grace. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to emphasize that for some reason. As Bob mm-hmm. Reed used to say, there will be no extra charge for that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is another protection and benefit. Galatians 3.14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So through faith, we trusted it, and we believed it, and then we can claim it in Ephesians 1.13. Or we can confess it. In and, him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. So once we trusted and believed, there's that ceiling, and that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have our names written on our for His name written on our foreheads. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Mm-hmm. It's a spiritual mark. It's like the devil's mark is not a literal mark of six six six, but we have that spiritual mark of that baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the devil sees that, and he says, "Oh my, that's a child of God." And just like the seal on the water bottle, why do we look for the seal on the water bottles to show that it's not been tampered with? Mm -hmm. And so when the devil sees that seal, he goes, oh my, this guy cannot be tampered with. Mm -hmm. He flees. He's afraid. He he trembles at us because of Christ has sealed us with his Holy Spirit. Again, it's amazing to me how some people spend half their life trying to run from the devil. When Christ said, storm the gates, you've been sealed. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. What are you afraid of? We're men and women of faith. Let's go on. We have point eight here that we have that daily assurance. Hebrews 10, 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he that he is faithful that promised. Yeah, so here it is. That assurance, there's no wavering in my assurance. I have assurance of faith. Of course, I'm going to because my heart has been sprinkled, it's been set free, I've been justified. The blood of the Lamb has released me. And now I can enter that throne room of grace with boldness. There's confidence, assurance that I've been forgiven. There's daily freedom from the bondage of the law. Galatians 3, 24 and 25. Three twenty-four 
24 and 25. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. No, we're not under that, that, that Old Testament law. We're under what law are we under? The law of love. And so that was our schoolmaster to point us to love. And even in Romans 7, Paul said that law was meant for life, but I failed it. So God's moral law is always meant for life. So he's talking here to me, what I believe is the, the civil and the priestly law. Because a man could be justified by obeying God's moral law in the Old Testament. That's what God wanted. That's what he desired, that, you would, that he would have a people, the Israelites, that would so love God that they would obey the Ten Commandments. But he didn't even get done doing, teach, showing Moses the law on the way down. He had rose up to play and rebelled against God who delivered them out of Egypt. So we're free from that Old Testament law of bondage. Mm -hmm. Now we're under the law of liberty, or in Romans chapter 8, the law of the Spirit. And that law of the Spirit, and now I'm free to love. Because sin is removed from the conscience. I'm free. <laughs> and God has shed abroad his love in my heart. And that's a daily pro. You know, that, that love is great, but every day there should be a greater love in our heart for God that releases us from that law that kept us in bonds and chains where we couldn't obey it. But we can obey through Christ his law of love. That's a hard one for people to understand. It is. But, but this is what Christ desires for his bride. That we would be such a people to love him. To be men and women of faith. Mm -hmm. That we walk in that freedom to love one another and love him. The thing that kept us in chains was sin. Mm -hmm. And I was only guilty of the law because I was guilty of the law. And once you're guilty of the law, there's no way to ever get out of that guilt until Christ came mm -hmm. and set us free from that law. There's increased understanding, Hebrews 11.3. Yes, Hebrews 11.3, increased understanding by faith. <clears throat> Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So there's that daily understanding, that increased understanding of God, how he created the world, what his word says. There's point 11, there's that daily ability to stand, and I've already explained that, but let's look at 2 Corinthians 1.24. We stand victorious through the power of the Holy Spirit by the grace of God that has been given us. 2 Corinthians 1.24. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for by faith you stand. And so by our faith we're daily, daily victorious. There's increased capacity. Second Corinthians, where we're here, ten fifteen. Not boasting beyond our measure, that is in other men's labors, but that with the hope that as your faith grows, we shall be within our sphere enlarged even more by you. And so here again, our faith grows. 
And so we become men and women of faith that very moment that we've asked for forgiveness of God. He's granted it us. We believe in our heart. We've confessed that he is our Savior. And now from that day forward, it's a growth process. And it grows from day to day, from sometimes from minute to minute, hour to hour. One of the things I want to say that I, that I haven't listed as something that would help us increase our faith is by our experiences. Mm -hmm, that's true. Because we hear testimonies of lives like Peter shared with guys like C.T. Studd and other victories and other testimonies that we all have. And these are something that we should reflect on, that God was faithful at this time, and this is yeah. what he did for us. This is what he did for them. And so by that, that should increase our faith Amen. By, by reading these, you know, they're called heroes of faith because they were heroes of faith. And we read them because by their example, it, you know, it increases my faith mm -hmm. to rise up. Mm -hmm. And so yes. there is that experience that we all have for our faith to grow each day. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians 1.3. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. So I really love that verse where it says that because your faith is growing exceedingly, and the love of every one of you is overflowing, or aboundeth. And so here is the love is overbounding. And so this is the entrance way to faith. So what is the result of overbound in love? Faith. And faith grows more. It's that increase. We want to have more faith. We need to learn to love God and love others more. We have godly edifying in Timothy 1.4. 1 Timothy 1.4. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions, rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. So building up, and, and so faith will build us up. It, it allows us to stand at the end of the day, that daily standing in faith, that daily edifying by his word. We also have... Another daily thing is pure conscience daily. We're in 1 Timothy. Let's look at 3, 9. They must hold the mystery of faith with a clear conscience. Yes, and so we have that clear conscience, that faith. So we hold on to faith how? With a clear conscience. Mm -hmm. Conscience doesn't condemn me. In 1 Timothy 1, 19, it says, Hold in faith and a good conscience, which some haven't put away concerning faith, had made it a shipwreck. Mm. Their faith has been shipwrecked. Mm. They're crashed on the shore. And they, they're, they're washed up. <laughs> they're washed up. And so we want to make sure that through a clean conscience, we're holding that 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 faith in our hand that we will not ever be shipwrecked. So that's daily ability to fight a good fight. Point 15. Daily ability. 1 Timothy 6, 11 and 12. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, Fight the good mm -hmm. fight of faith. Lay hold, hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Fight the good fight, a daily fight. We're in a battle for the souls of us and the souls of others. Yeah. Also, 2 Timothy 4.17 
Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preacher might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. Is that right? Yes. And the, the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And so here was the, that ability for Paul to stand daily and to battle the devil. And the battle, the devil came at Paul. You see a beat against his house. And Paul said, you know, he may destroy me, but that doesn't matter to me. If I die, it's gain. Mm -hmm. If I'm here, then I'm going to do the work that God has given me. It doesn't matter what. It, you see, when we get that, then surely we've come full circle to how we overcome the devil. And that is threefold by the blood of the Lamb in Revelation 12. That's what Christ has done. By faith, I've come to him. I've asked for forgiveness. That blood has cleansed me. By the word of my testimony, that's what I have done with the blood. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is, we don't love our life unto death. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus said, whosoever shall gain his life in this age will lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life in this age okay. shall gain life everlasting. Mm -hmm. And so the heart of Paul was, it doesn't matter to him what the devil does to the physical body. The spiritual Paul, the eternal Paul, was going to do the work of God mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. whatever it was. And every day, Paul never walked, he did not walk in fear. He walked in that daily victory to take the battle to the devil. What a great example to us. Mm -hmm. What a great example. He fought the good fight. Don, you're a military man. Your battle is never over, my friend. <laughs> yeah, we know it. We battle him every day. We have to yeah. battle him with spiritual weapons. Same with all of us. I wasn't picking on you, just because you're our military guy. And, and we do a battle, and then we come back home. In a natural war, but this war is a lifetime. Our war is a lifetime. Yeah. So let's go on here to produces unity in the body, Ephesians 4.13. Uh, Ephesians 4.13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge mm. of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And so, again, faith produces constant unity in the body. There's daily pleasing to God. Hebrews 11, 6. We've said this quite a few times. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if we don't, aren't we not walking in faith? Daily, we cannot please him. So we want to be daily men and women of faith to please him. Also, in 11.6, we saw that he is a rewarder to those who come to him in faith. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are our rewards of daily faith? Peace, yeah. joy, yeah. righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Overcoming sin. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of good, isn't there? Yeah. There's a lot of rewards when we come to him in faith. He's a rewarder. Mm -hmm. That's what he's going to do. <clears throat> There's also a daily testimony of Christ in our life. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 1.8. For, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. So there was the testimony of the Thessalonians. It was spoken throughout the world. It was because they were men of faith and women of faith. Colossians 1.4 Since we heard of your faith in Christ yes. Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. So 
there's the testimony. They had faith in Christ and love for Christ. That's the testimony. That's what our testimony should produce. There's boldness and progressive. Uh, Ephesians 3.12 In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So there's that boldness. We have that act, access by faith, and we, it produces a boldness. That boldness is the, in the face of an adversary. That's what that boldness is referring to in the Greek. It, it's in the face of an adversary. So we have that boldness because we have that authority. We're men away and women of faith. We're not going to back down. We're going to make a stand for righteousness and for holiness and God's word, and we're going to be pushed back against the lie of that enemy. Of course, with our boldness and where we're standing with God, we can enter his throne room of grace. But, you know, to me, that's when we, we're facing a tr temptation because that's what grace does. It's that divine influence of the heart. And we're surrounded, you know, Lord, I need help. I need your grace. There's continuing, rooting, and building in Christ. Colossians 2.7. Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Yeah, so that root, it goes deep in connection to Christ. That root, we trust him. Like a tree root, that old oak tree. We've trusted Christ, and that root is connected to, and it's deep. It's strong. It's something that you're ever trying to build a deck in your house and you come upon a root and you see that tree root where it goes to and you think, man, that oak tree has some strong roots. Mm -hmm. And here's that analogy of us. We're continually rooted in that connection in faith to Christ. Mm -hmm. In doing so, we become strong and we're built up with that strong root. Of course, in John... He is the vine where the branches. He is that root. He who abides in me stays, remains, and continue. And that daily faith shall be rooted and established. It shall make us wise. 2 Timothy 3.15 So we're just looking at our benefits that are produced by daily active faith. And that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So by faith we become wise. Again, this is like the fourth time we've covered this, but let's read this first. There's that daily overcoming or being victorious. First John 5, 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our, our faith. faith. Mm -hmm. And so, are we born of God? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what should our faith produce? Overcome the world. What is in the world? Satan. What else besides Satan? The lust of the Satan? flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and it's all. So we have Satan, that is correct. We have lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. What else is in the world? We have Antichrist government, yeah. Antichrist mm -hmm. religion, and we have the workers of iniquity. Mm -hmm. And so, by faith, we overcome the world and all that is in the world. We're not going to succumb to Antichrist government, Antichrist religion. We're not going to succumb to sin. Not going to cave to the devil. We're overcoming, victorious. We have divine healing. Luke 17, 19.
And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. And so faith can, will produce divine healing. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And so we're made alive, we're quickened, we're made alive by the spirit. <clears throat> then point 25, continual kept by the power of God. First Peter 1 Peter 1.5, through faith. Let me start in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which, according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us, has given us a spiritual birth, again unto a lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved for you in heaven, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So we're, we're, we're kept, or we're protected by the power of God through faith. And, and I can tell you so many times where God has delivered me. Uh, and I know I was with Peter a lot of times. We should have been dead. We really should have been dead. But God has kept us from seeing that death. So there must be work left for me to do. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can't have a whole log, a huge log fall out of a, off a truck that comes right at you, and somehow you, you don't know what happened. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're not dead. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah. But those are big logs. Those are big logs. Yeah, like you've never seen. And so, uh, so God, we're kept by the power of God through faith. Mm. And then, of course, we confess, thank you, Lord. <laughs> we praise your name. Mm. That produces comp continual powerful confessions, Matthew 8, 10. Again, confession is one of our acting pillars. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who were following, Truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. And so here was the man that had lepers, see, and the Lord healed him because of his faith. And this was the confession that Jesus made. What great faith this man had to produce a powerful confession there's constant removes obstacles, Matthew 21, 21. And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you shall not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it shall happen. So as we go out in faith, there's an obstacle. And when we speak to that mountain, that's our confession, it will be removed. That obstacle will go away. And Christ will provide a way. Of course, we have to be men and women of faith. A mountain is just here symbolic for whatever is preventing you from continuing with God. Mm 
to do what God has called you to do. And there has been, you know, mountains in our life that we've had to face and we have to speak to that mountain, be removed. It's quite amazing to me in my many journals, journeys, that there's a difference between a mountain and a closed door. <laughs> yes. Sometimes God closes the door. He does. Yes. And so Paul's desire was to go to Thessalonica the second time, but Satan hindered him from going. Mm -hmm. What happened to Paul's faith? You think Paul didn't say, be thou removed from me, thou... This hindrance? I'm being honest with you. You can't you can't ignore it. What is your answer to that? Where God shortly after revealed another plan, his plan. He, he did. So the other brethren were in a dream saying, Come over here. So Satan closed one door and God opened another door. That's how God is. So as we go, and Satan may come against us. He may delay your plane. He may cause you to miss a flight. But there's another door mm -hmm. that will be open. <clears throat> we go forward. I'm not going to stop, stop doing what God called me to do to make disciples of the nation simply because the devil for a short time hindered it. That's my point. Mm -hmm. I remember we were going to have a school in, in Cameroon, and I had the opportunity to go down the river. I forgot the name of the river. I was going down to a fishing village where they want to do a Bible school. And as far as I know, my friend told me that no white man had been to this village in his lifetime. And as I was going there, we were going to start a school in, in Cameroon, and I saw a vision. There's Cameroon on this shore, and Nigeria's on this shore, and I saw a statue, a white angel, or whatever he was, I don't think it was the Lord, but he had it was standing on the banks of Cameroon, and he had his hand up, stop. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't forward, we couldn't proceed at that time. I couldn't. I couldn't go. I was planning on going to Cameroon, but I couldn't go forward. So there was a door closed. But another door opened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we can't get discouraged when our plans are put here, mm -hmm. like Paul's desire was come, and God has a better plan. Yeah. So there's some mm -hmm. instances what happens in our life. Mm -hmm. And as we walk in faith with God, you know, we have to be, be sure that we're being led by the Spirit of God. And so it's hard to tell sometimes between a closed door, how did it get closed? And if we would just pray and seek the Lord, God gives us the answer and we go forward with God. And next thing you know, we're, we're with God and he's opened many great doors and opportunities. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it produces constant godly works. And we've already looked at this in our works of righteousness. So we'll just read one. And nine two. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of yeah. the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. So there's that mm -hmm. constant godly works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Produces wonders and miracles. Acts 6, 8. Miracles. Stephen, full of grace and power, was performing great wonders and signs among the people. 
And so full of faith and power, what was the result? Great works, great signs, miracles happened. Romans 4.20, it gives daily glory to God. Faith will produce that worship and glory to the Lord. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then on our next page, or I don't know if it's your next page, point 31, we receive Abraham's blessings. Galatians 3, 8 through 9. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So here, through faith, we receive the blessings of Abraham. And you see on your outline, that is in three different ways, the spiritual blessings, the physical blessings for our bodies and material, our provision. Point 32, it constantly appears with love, 1 Thessalonians 3, 6 and 7. 1 Thessalonians 3, 6 through 7. But now when Timotheus came from you among us, unto us, and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. And so here was faith and love. That was the good news that Timothy brought to Paul. Constantly appears with love, and we've already saw that, that the beginning of faith has to be love. Faith works through love. Mm -hmm. Then, to finish here, we'll do some, uh, or a few more verses. Point 33 says, Faith produces a godly person. Hebrews 11, and we don't need to read all that, but let's look what it does in verse 11.33, what faith will do. Eleven thirty-three. Faith, who through faith subdued kingdoms, and so kingdoms are subdued. They're brought low because of men of faith. When faith is come to an area, those kingdoms are humbled by what God is doing in their kingdoms. It also obtains promises. It says it wrought righteousness, obtained promises. And so that's what faith does. It obtains those promises of God, looking from the old to the new. We're now looking back at the cross. They look forward to the cross. It also obtained promises, subdued kingdoms, stopped the mouths of lions. That's Daniel, in reference to Daniel, what he did. And so also, for point 36, it produces patience. But first, let's do Galatians 3, 5, that it produces ministry. And then we'll close with 36. Point 37, Galatians 3, 5. That's he then who provides you with the Spirit and works miracle among you, do it by the works of the law, or by hearing with faith. So faith produces ministry in the spirit. And then finally, James. And we're going to read that here in a minute. So James produces patience. <clears throat> and so we saw that we have the shield of faith and we have the benefits and protection with our shield of faith. And we saw that these arrows are representing the attacks of the enemies that will come upon us in, in our life. 
some days there's a greater attacks. Nevertheless, we will face these attacks, these fiery darts, and the wiles of the devil as men and women of faith. And even Jesus said, the wind and the rain is going to come and beat upon the house. And so this how this these attacks are going to produce something with our faith. It's a testing of your faith. Faith has to be tested. What kind of person are you? What are you? Are you do you have faith? And so here we see that these arrows will attack the house of faith. They'll come against the house of faith. And we see this in James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4, or 1 through 4, but I'll just do 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or very different types of trials. And temptation surely is one. So the first thing we're to do is count it all joy. Very hard thing. The attitude should be one of joy. Why? Because knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. So this patience isn't something that, that we think, oh, I'm not going to get upset about it. I'm not going to worry. That's not the patience that is being described in the Greek word. So faith is going to produce patience. But let patience have her perfect work through faith that you may be perfect and entirely want nothing. So this word for patience is sometimes translated endurance in other translations. This simply means that faith is going to attack the moral character of an individual. And these, and God is looking for a faith that has patience, and endurance. And this simply means a, a person with such moral character and resolve that they will never succumb their character to a testing or a trial. And that is what God is looking, that is what is happening. This testing of your faith, God is looking for an examination of your moral character. And faith is involved with, your, with who you are. And it is by faith that, that my moral character has been established through the word of Christ and my obedience to his word. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. They wandered in the wilderness. For what? That God was testing them to find out what was in their heart, whether they would obey God or not. He was looking to see if they were men and women of faith. Same with us. God is looking to see if you're going to be men and women of faith. And so we go through these tests and trials. Will you succumb? Will you give in? Will your faith become shipwrecked? You see? <laughs> so it's a trial of what's in your heart. And, and, and when that moral character is of love and faith in God and who he is and that trust, then we withstand that temptation. We withstand that trial. And we come to the reason why it is found in verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. There's that word endureth. His moral character is not going to succumb because I'm a man of faith. I put my trust and belief in Christ. I love him. Faith works through love. Blessed is a man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, and that's like that gold that's, that's being he heated in, a, in that pot, and the dross comes to the top, and there's a separation. It's the trying of your faith under extreme heat. Mm -hmm. But blessed is he that doesn't succumb to that heat, that pressure. He shall receive the crown of life, mm -hmm. which the Lord has promised to them that love him. And so these fiery darts will come against the house of faith. They'll come against us. They're going to try to beat around, beat in the, beat it in because our faith is being tested and tried. And God is looking for the heart, that person that won't succumb. And we've read a lot of obedience 
We must obey. We must do the work of God. This is what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. And so the end result is what? The testing will produce the crown of life. My, my reward is, is relationship for all, all eternity mm. with the Lord. Mm. So that concludes my lesson tonight. Boss, you can uh, 